Hey everybody and uh, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Blu-ray Hunter Reviews. I'm the Blu-ray Hunter and here's my review. Uh, this is the end of Warner Archives month and um, I only other Warner Archives movie I had that um, either I hadn't seen, which I hadn't, or that um, I hadn't reviewed already on something else um, was this. Yankee Doodle Dandy, um, James Cagney. Uh, so my co-host for Indie Film Cafe, Paul, this is his least favorite movie, like I think of all time. Like he said, like if if he had to, you know, be in hell or whatever, he'd have to watch this over and over again. That would be his hell. Um, I would not, uh, I would not nearly like, I go, go that far. I loved it. I had a fun time. Um, this is more, I do like musicals, so, and it's it's sort of your old style 40s musical where it's not a musical like they start bursting into song randomly when they're just like thinking about stuff. It's more along the lines of, this is a story of George M. Cohan, who, George Michael Cohan, who um, had basically um, became a, what is it, uh, just became an uh song and dance man and uh and at, at a time where like the country really needed it and this became a very patriotic uh movie back then in 1942 when this was released really really needed that like i think right now we sort of need something we're not going to get anything like this but we need something similar to kind of boost morale for america you know um kind of something patriotic but we don't really we don't really get that anymore um a lot more people are talking about moving away from the country and uh we're so divided these days that it'd be hard to kind of bring everybody together with this kind of thing um i really enjoyed this movie it's cute it's fun it's um it's enjoyable you know not many musicals sometimes can get that way i mean i just reviewed another musical for this uh and i mean they're they're fun but like this really had like this grandstanding you know sort of sweet story um if i have to go into it it's basically and and by the way if you read up on it it's not all true like not exactly they kind of take liberties with certain things but as i read that the uh <clears throat> george m cohan's uh daughter georgette actually which i guess he was named she was named after him um she said that um this was a movie that he would be proud and apparently he watched it he saw it and said he really enjoyed james cagney in the role and he really it was basically a really nice tribute to him um and he was sort of there to kind of give some help on some of it but mostly i mean this movie was pretty much uh just there to get people boosted up to tell a story of a man who really loved and uh, loved america and wanted to make sure you know he even tried to enlist in the war but it was it was too uh it was you know he was too old he was like 38 i think 30 no 39 and uh they said you're too old um but we need you and we need you here you know entertaining people and um, I thought that was really sweet. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought all the actors, all the characters that were portrayed in this movie were a lot of fun. The father, I mean, you get to get to see George when he's, you know, in the George character when he's younger. And he's this like snotty little brat who gets his parents in so much trouble that, um, you know, that basically... Uh, he has to be spanked at one point um, for being such a troublemaker. Um, and he doesn't, like, in his mind, he's not meaning to. He thinks he's doing what's great for the family. But at that time, he didn't know what he was doing, you know. And he should, when his father tells him to keep his mouth shut, keep your freaking mouth shut. Just let things go. But he couldn't. And, um... You know, things sort of kept working out because he had this, like, ego to him. Uh, there's a great scene with him and uh, Mr. Foy 
who uh I, I'm not I'm not familiar with them or anything. Um, but apparently uh, you know, both of them sort of had a big ego about e about themselves. And so both of them sort of <laughs> clashed. And it was kind of funny because at the end of the day, you know, after he introduces himself, I'm George M. Cohen. And the guy's like, oh, well, if uh, if you took any offense to what I was saying, then good. You know, I meant it that way or whatever. He's like, yes. And I I mean what I say when I when I talk rap, let's go have a drink. And you don't really see that in stuff these days. It's always and in real life, it's always, you know, one ego fights another ego and they don't come together. They they just destroy each other, it seems these days, um, as, especially in, in the um arts and everything and uh it was just really nice to see stuff like that um just a remembrance of how nice um this this world can be and this movie really was like that i mean um i it was directed by the director of casablanca and he also did like white christmas and you can sort of see a lot of that in it but it was still a different movie than like casablanca you know um but it was it was just still very sweet like you have this you know um you have this family who loves each other through thick and thin they will not give up on each other um they should be throwing this guy to the wolves but they're like you know we're together like no matter what we're going to do this and um so i just thought it was a really sweet um movie it has a really great message about patriotism and and love and and being you know with family and 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 you know there's this there's this also this great scene where he's trying to get this um kind of reminds me of ed wood the my favorite movie of all time where in ed wood uh you know he shows a uh you know shows a, a script to a potential investor and she wants to be in it so she takes the role that was promised to his girlfriend dolores and in the movie in this movie um Yankee Doodle Dandy, the uh the girl knows already that her parts the that her part has been taken by some by the big star and she's just so happy for you know which makes me wonder if uh if if the Dolores Fuller scene in Edward was really just ripped a little bit from this, you know, kind of an opposite reaction sort of idea. Because I don't think in real life Dolores Fuller ever freaked out on uh ed wood about uh the part she was she was probably wasn't happy but i don't think that's what like you know it, it kind of shows that that was part of like the beginning of their relationship being you know disappeared or whatever um so anyway point being let's get back to to this um so there, there there was that scene and it just was so sweet it was just a sweet good natured scene in a movie and i really enjoyed that and i enjoyed seeing these characters come to life in a way and and i wanted to follow them on their journey um my only gripe is it's two hours and five minutes and uh to me i feel like that's just a little bit too long i don't know how long i, w I don't know what i would cut necessarily i mean it is one of those movies that kind of does need to be seen all the way through but i just in my opinion it just feels a little too long like after maybe an hour and a half i'm starting to go oh, oh okay is this coming to an end what is going on like how much more can they tell and they tell the whole story it's kind of like how in citizen kane you see the whole story um which i think was like done a year before this movie um or so um but you see the whole story of his, of of Kane's life, and Kane Kane is a fictional character based on people. This is a real um character based on a real person, you know, um, and real people sort of. But uh, you know, like I said, there's some liberties there. Apparently, he was married twice. Um, but I can understand why they they don't want to necessarily tell the the truth of it. You know, they don't want to tell the real full thing because it might kind of bore people a little bit this is more of a this is a spectacle this is something big grander than you know than than life you know and everything you can kind of tell that and it's it's sort of sweet on that i like that so 
Anywho, um, I don't know. I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I think it was one of the few. It, it isn't the the greatest Warner Archives movie, in my opinion, or whatever. But I I really enjoyed it. I got I had a fun time, and the songs are catchy. Uh, especially over there is just very catchy. Yankee Doodle Dandy, obviously catchy. Rick, give my regards to Broadway. Um, the Mary song, not as catchy to me. Um, there may be a couple other ones. I was kind of like, nah. And I can see why the people turned down his initial, um, you know, song for the one he was doing with Mary. Um, I just. You know, Mr. Harrington or whatever it was, and I just I I was like, yeah, I don't like that. Like I can see why they would turn that down, uh, the investors. But I loved my favorite. Actually, my one of my favorite scenes in the movie is the scene where he meets his partner because he had seen him get thrown out by those other investors, and he uses him to basically collaborate and make um a project together called Yankee Doodle Dandy. And he'll just write the songs and the guy would write the story and or whatever. And they just keep working together and they work together and they work together and they kept doing it until like the very end um, where they, where they say, Oh, I thought you guys weren't talking to each other anymore. And, you know, can we see, can we get a picture of you guys tearing up your contract? And he goes, we never had a contract, which they never did. They just kind of worked together. And so they just shook hands and that's what they took pictures of. And, you know, all the way up to the end when he realized, you know, he was sort of becoming a nobody again. Like nobody really knew who he was anymore. He had gotten too old and uh, he was kind of sad. People are kind of, they thought it was cute, but they didn't know who he was. Um, and I'm sure if he said, I'm the one who wrote, I'm over, uh, you know, uh, over there. Um, they maybe some of the people might know, but some of the kids, they didn't know. And, and that sort of goes to show what time's like, you know, um, if you tell a, a kid these days, you should watch Yankee Doodle Dandy, they'll know the song Yankee Doodle Dandy, because that's saying like every July 4th, but they probably wouldn't know the movie unless their parents are like bringing them up like this. And not every parent is doing that because not every parent was brought up with this movie. So, you know, if I ever had kids, I would have brought them up with this movie um or whatnot you know and, and stuff because i really truly believe that this movie is wonderful and should be should be watched by people if people don't get into it that's okay like paul not liking it that's fine he doesn't like musicals and he doesn't like like movies like this this is just not his cup of tea that's fine um if your movie musicals aren't your thing definitely don't watch it um i'm not trying to tell you that you should i'm just saying i enjoyed it um, it's probably up there, but it's just so funny because once again, it's it's not, you know, like Cinderella or something where the characters are singing because they're sad or something. You know, it's it's the shows that the guy's done, the 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 the, the songs he's created as a composer, and I just love that. Like I just love seeing that stuff. So, um. I always kind of like view these things and wonder if this would have made a good remake and no, 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 it can't be remade today. Um, if they tried to, it just would bomb badly. Um, they need to just try to do some other stuff. So just like I've been doing with most of my Blu-rays and everything, I kind of going to go over what you get with this. This, it says star spangled extras. It's got some good, good stuff in here. All right. So let freedom sing the story of Yankee doodle dandy documentary. Audio commentary. I don't know who the audio commentary is with. Probably with some kind of historian. Uh, John Travolta remembers uh, James Cagney. Leonard Moulton hosts Warner Nights at the movies 1942. The trailer, newsreel, dramatic short, cartoon, and Cagney in a wartime short called You, uh, you John Jones. Uh, vintage cartoon Yankee Doodle Daffy, which I kind of want to see. At some point, um, audio only extras include radio show and pre recording session, uh, outtakes and rehearsals. So, so there you go. Um, nice little, nice little thing right there. Um, and it, what I recommend buying it on. So, the reason I originally bought it, by the way, is not because I wanted to get it for Water Archives, that just happened to be awesome and the, the same, um, fact, but, um, 
it is up on the AFI's top 100. Now it's, I think it might be like number 100, you know, or something in the 90s, maybe 93 or whatever it is, but it's up there in the AFI top 100s. And so I started buying those like backwards, like from 100 to whatever. And then I stopped because I just decided not to do it. It was going to be like, uh, I was going to go through and review every single 100 films of the AFI. Um, and I've seen other people do this. It's not original. But um, I decided not to do it um, because A, it would have just taken so much time. And I wanted to do it where it was um, it was done once a week, you know, put out once a week. And I was like, if I do it, and I don't know if I'd still do it. Um, but if I did it, uh, it, I would have to start it way earlier, like in maybe summer or fall. So that when we put it out in the winter, like in January, that it would just um, you know, go over. But I, it's okay. Um, we'll we'll see. Uh, but yeah, the AFI top one hundred films, and I do want to get all of them eventually on Blu Ray and, and 4K. So, uh, but that's it. Um, so check this out if you like Warner Archives. Um, this is definitely one I think you guys will enjoy. So, all right, until tomorrow. Bye.